Here are stories making news right now. I'm Rob Johnson. How did police put together evidence that led to charges in the ambush shooting of an ATF agent? CBS 2's Mai Martinez has the story. According to authorities, at least three cameras captured some of the events leading up to and following the shooting of that ATF agent on May the 4th. And that video helped lead law enforcement to their suspect, Ernesto Godinez. We can tell you at the end of this alley, between Hermitage and Wood is this brick building. Next to that brick building is Godinez's residence. According to the criminal complaint, video, surveillance video from this alley captures Godinez leaving his residence, coming across this alley, and then heading over to the 4300 block of Hermitage. And that's where they say that shots were fired, shell casings were found on that block, and detected by a pod camera down the street, which detected at least seven shots being fired. The ATF agent was shot down the block at around 44th and Wood. And so right now they're going through all this video and according to the criminal complaint, Ernesto Godinez is the only person who appears on that video around 316, 318 in the morning when the ATF agent was shot. And he is the only person that they say appears on that video who is not a member of law enforcement. The crowd for the 2019 mayoral race in Chicago is getting crowded, but Incumbent Mayor Rahm Emanuel holds a decided fundraising edge, but will his foes be able to expose him on the issues? CBS 2's Derek Blakely has the answer. As he announced progress in replacing all of Chicago's street lighting with brighter, more energy efficient LED lighting, Mayor Rahm Emanuel says he's focused on solving city problems, not on politics. But Emanuel has already built a campaign war chest that it's highly unlikely any other contender will be able to match. Right now, Emanuel has $5.1 million on hand. That's 50 times more than any other challenger. Businessman Willie Wilson is next at $107,000, and former police superintendent Gary McCarthy has about 100000 But it's not just money Emanuel has to be concerned about, it's also issues. Lori Lightfoot resigned as police board chairman yesterday with plans to jump into the race within days. She's been a critic of Emanuel's handling of the Laquan McDonald shooting, as well as his handling of police reform in general. And that will surely keep that red hot issue burning throughout the campaign. And finally, meteorologist Mary Kay Kleist has your forecast. After another beautiful afternoon, we are going to be watching for shower and thunderstorm chances to increase for your Wednesday. Now, as we move through tonight, we'll have building clouds late, maybe a shower or storm closer to daybreak, but thunder chances will be around for your Wednesday. We see a little activity here, showers, some thunderstorms over southern Minnesota, but the problem is they're bumping into this very dry air mass that we have in place, locked as a ridge of high pressure, but it will be moving out, allowing for low pressure to move in. So with the first part of the system, it looks like we will see some showers or storms at daybreak for your Wednesday. So here's how Futurecast plays out the rest of this evening by 11 o'clock tonight, 66 degrees, just partly cloudy skies. Then into the overnight, look at 7 a.m. tomorrow, 61 showers and storms perhaps lining up for the western suburbs right along 59 there, continuing to push into the city. So the early morning rush, probably showers and storms. Some of those could be strong. 10 a.m. leaving the area for a little break, perhaps midday, 2 o'clock. If we stay mostly cloudy, that could help bring some stable air in before our evening round of thunderstorm activity moves in. So we have to see how it plays out in the middle of the day as far as how much our atmosphere recovers from the morning activity. But right now, Futurecast does show showers and storms forming then with the main cold front by 5 o'clock. So with the evening rush home, 74 degrees, showers, thunderstorms. Some of those could be strong or even severe, especially as you get east of the I-57 corridor. So for Wednesday, it looks like this sunrise is 538. Thunder may greet us there at that time and through 9 a.m. temperatures around 62 degrees. Can't rule out a shower or storm completely in the middle of the day, but that right now looks to be the lowest chance of activity before it refires along the cold front by the evening rush hour tomorrow.